His Holiness the Dalai Lama always says, compassion is the point, but compassion is not enough. We've got to have wisdom. So what that means is in the Buddhist analysis, what that means is like I've been suggesting already, the very first level of practice, this is an analogy, the wisdom wing and the compassion wing, a bird needs two wings. So the first work is the wisdom wing. And what that literally means is you start to do the inner work. You start to learn to know yourself. You recognize your, you, you try to control your body and speech. You try not to harm others. You try to control yourself. You get to know your own mind. You recognize your own attachment, you recognize your anger, you recognize your fears, because the why, Alicia, is because they are the source of my pain. And so the thing is, the work we do there, then on the basis of this, we are able to have compassion. Now, we all know we have compassion, even if we're still full of misery ourselves, many people have compassion. We're very, maybe we're very needy, we want people to approve of us, but we also have compassion. But the trouble is, if I've got all that attachment and all that neediness to be seen as a good girl, to, to be approved of, and then my compassion is then put onto a person who abuses me, then of course we're going to get completely upset. We are going to get completely upset. So the thing is, we have to have the wisdom to know how to be with that person. You've got to have the wisdom to know how to behave. So let's say it's, you know, say it's, you, you know, your poor old grandma who's angry and miserable and paranoid and demanding of you. And you're trying to be so compassionate. Everything you do, she mean to you. We know there are situations like this. So you can say that in a way, if you think it's useful to say something, but usually with a person like that who's taking advantage of you because they're miserable, when they are miserable, that's when we take advantage of each other, then it's not going to help them saying something. So maybe the thing is to retreat, not to try and explain, just to, to realize they're not capable and then to not expect it from them and to, and, to, and to withdraw. Maybe that's a more wise thing to do. If you genuinely think saying something will help them change, but often it won't, you know. Often we talk because we want to be expressed. We want them to hear what we think. But if they're miserable and they're being mean to you, they're not capable of hearing you. So often it's just best just to move away. If you we realise that the only reason a person is mean is because they're miserable. We don't like to hear that because it sounds like you're getting them off the hook. No, no, that's why they're miserable. They're miserable, that's why they're mean. So if we realise that, it's like there's no point in expecting it from them. So we try not to take it too personally, but this is tough because it implies you're really together in yourself. But then we will learn from it and realize that we've got to be wise in whom we in in the people we hang out with and the people we show compassion to. Because often we want, if we feel if I'm being compassionate, they somehow should know I'm being compassionate and repay me, you know, with the kindness sort of thing. But it doesn't work like that. So we've got to really see: is it, you know, got to be more wise with each other, more more skillful.